as seen by up to a dozen of viewers. It's Sanctuary of Reality, my comic review series. Time now for Cerebus, issue 182, the 32nd chapter of Mothers and Daughters. Having read Victor Davis's mention of the audience, K. Sarah Sarah suddenly evolves into a reflection of the 20,000 readers of the book currently and becomes the 40,000 eyes roach. Gripping Siren's head, Cerebus desperately tries to break her neck. She struggles to get up and does so, but he keeps a tight chokehold on her the whole time trying again and again to break her neck until she suddenly backs up into a pillar and smashes him against it three times. Dazed, Cerebus begins to pass out as Siren retrieves his sword. She charges at the dazed aardvark and begins to slash the blade wildly at him as he desperately dodges, getting sliced up nonetheless. He keeps this up for a while, but will he eventually take a wound that will leave a lasting impression? Victor Davis ruminates on the question off asked to him by women. What are you thinking about? He has quite a lot on his mind. He recalls a moment when he asked Neil Gaiman if he believes in magic. He recalls the lengthy and detailed instructions to the coffee he's drinking, which he proceeded to ignore and treat simply just like coffee. He briefly touches on Cerebus's injury, the headlines of current front page news articles concerning celebrities, a TV reporter's question to him during local coverage, a memory of leaving cookies for Santa as a kid which is mixed with a memory of himself in school, a fax from a lady who sent him some research info that led Victor to discover the current owner of the legendarily cursed Crystal Skull lives in the same town as him. Victor also recalls recently when an elevator stopped on a non-existent 13th floor with an announcement that sometimes sounds like it says 13 or 14 depending on the day. He also recalls a quote by John Lennon concerning the Beatles which relates to truly understanding something. Finally, Victor recalls talking to Alan Moore, a grandiose storyteller, especially in person. Alan talks about how all stories, legends, myths are all true as long as the audience believes in them. Does it really matter if something is true or not? To the storyteller, the story must be true in order to make the audience believe in it. Is this all going somewhere? Well, yeah, but Victor does end with a question for the audience. This is it for the cockroach until the beginning of Guys, and there it's just a very brief cameo. Uh, I don't know why he didn't warrant a proper write-out like Elrod got, but it is what it is, isn't it? The big injury which Cerebus suffers, which is permanent, uh, was indeed, as Victor Davis claims, foreshadowed, as recently as earlier on in flight, when the same body part fell off of the stone aardvark statue of the Pix. There's a few other moments as well, but that's probably the biggest and um, one that most obvious one that sticks out in my mind. The Victor Davis part of this issue is very varied with a lot of ground to cover. It reads like a stream of consciousness and that's pretty much what it's supposed to be. It's a mental roadmap laid out in text form. Alan Moore will later on become a character proper in the series itself. Uh, he's actually said a lot of complimentary things about Cerebus as a book, much like Neil Gaiman, who's also mentioned here. Speaking of Moore, uh, a lot of the things that are on display here in terms of the narrative uh, breaching of fiction and reality, like a lot of the things that he's done in a lot of his work, such as from Hell and Promethea, for instance. They both deal, at least in part, with the metaphysics of fiction. 
I found this issue's text portion to be a, a lot more readable than the last issues, which had that whole House of Commons thing, which I found one was a bit one note. Here, so much is quite interesting, uh, even if it is a bit random. There is a common thread about what Victor Davis is talking about, as will become more apparent as we go along. I absolutely love the quote, Cerebus is like that. It's comfortable, and then it's uncomfortable. He's right. None of Reed's is playing it safe. As I've said before, it's brave, it's gutsy, and it's admittedly uncomfortable in a lot of points. Next time, whatever happened to the albino of Melvin Bone? 